Hey everybody, thank you for joining me on this cold and windy day. Um, I just wanted to make a video really fast. Uh, we're about to have a cold front. Well, it already started coming in, but um, it's going to really hit hard tonight. Last night we got, well, it wasn't nighttime, it was early morning. Between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m., our temperatures dipped all the way down to about 31 degrees. So, I know I'm on borrowed time when it comes to my tomatoes. So, what I did was I just went around and I pruned them back, way back. I left most of the stem, all of the stems that had uh, fruit growing on them, I left on. The stems that didn't have any fruit, I took off. So I cut them pretty, I pruned them back pretty heavily, uh, hoping that it will help ripen these fruits a lot quicker. Um, my thought process to that is that if the plant doesn't have to use a lot of energy in feeding the whole big bush, but just um, only the parts that have fruit, then it might harvest, I mean, it might ripen them a lot quicker. I don't know. I've never tried this before. It just makes sense to me because I have a lot of fruit that are still on these um, that I would like to keep. Tonight, I'm going to have to wrap all of these up um, to protect them from the weather from the cold and it's supposed to be a hard frost tonight and all the way through Friday so um, I'm hoping that everything works out so that I can continue to have my tomatoes <laughs> um, I took these tomato plants out completely out of these two containers right here um, what I did was yesterday I separated all my beans uh, my hard beans uh, and packaged them and so the ones that I had um, left over from that and I just planted them in these containers to see um, if I could get another good harvest out of them so this container has black beans that container has light red kidney beans yeah, so I was able for dinner tonight, I'm cooking up a cheesy potato dish um, and I was able to use some of my peppers from over here, which, I mean, these peppers are huge. Um, and I don't think they're as big as their potential. I mean, just take that out. <laughs> I don't think they're as big as their potential so uh i'm hoping that the cold that we have um, with me covering these that i can help them to live out past the cold front that we have coming in so that i'll be able to use them but you can see already there the leaves are trying to curl up a little bit here um and stuff so I don't know I'm keeping my fingers crossed <laughs> but I uh, yeah I was able to pick some off of here and use in my uh, potato dish and I gotta remind myself to take these in these need to go inside these are all hibiscus seedlings that I have and they need to go inside and I might even take that fig in I'm not sure yet um, but we're supposed to go through this cold snap until Friday and then after that it's supposed to warm up a little bit again so I don't know we'll see what happens hopefully I won't lose too much stuff hopefully I can save preserve my tomatoes and my peppers um, through this first cold snap. We'll see. Well, 
Okay, so today is the next day. Last night, uh, we had our first real cold, below freezing temps. Um, by the time I got up this morning to take my kids to school, I guess it was around 7 something. It was still like 31 degrees, but it felt colder than that. Um, so I had tucked in my tomatoes and my peppers, the ones that I wanted to keep, that is, covered them up. And after I uncovered them, this is what I found. It's still, the cold still got to them. So he's not going to make it. And I was trying to hold on to him because he had a little tomato still on him. But, well, oh, there's the tomatoes down there. I was looking for them. I was like, where'd they go? He had a little, a couple of little tomatoes still on him. So I was trying to protect him. But, oh well. He didn't make it. This one didn't make it either. As you can see, all the little leaves are, are black in color and just flimsy. Um, yeah. And a lot of these, my containers were iced over. Like this container that I had planted my... Um, uh, bean seeds in it's all iced over well it, it's not iced over now but it was this morning when I touched the dirt the dirt was frozen it was frozen solid so let's see what else um, my other tomato plant now this tomato plant I didn't even cover because I wasn't even trying to save this one. Um, I left this one exposed, but he still looks like the other ones. Um, and this one over here, I did cover, but as you can see, it did no good because it just got way too cold. I need to hurry up and build my greenhouse if I had my greenhouse I could have just stuck these guys in there so all those tomatoes are lost it's all lost it's not gonna come back I didn't ouch, I didn't cover this one so the only one of my tomato plants that stayed okay I did cover it and I guess whatever, for whatever reason, it stayed okay, this one. And he's got a couple of tomatoes on him. But his leaves and everything look pretty good still compared to everybody else. <laughs> everybody else is all messed up. Let me go back over here and show you. I did not cover this one. This is the cherry tomato, that volunteer. I really didn't want it. Oh, but look at my potatoes. I didn't notice that the potatoes, all the potatoes are, are shriveled up and dead. I just showed you guys those potatoes. Now it's weird because this one is a potato and now this one is fine, but this one has a, Yesterday was fine, and now it's all black and limp. Um, this potato is still fine. This potato is still fine. But the potatoes in my potato bucket here, they all are dead. They're all dead. Oh, including that other nightshade weed that was growing in here. <laughs> but yeah, they all end up dying. Ended up dying. So I see some potatoes in here. I see.
see a lot of potatoes in here. I'm gonna have to go in here and dig out all those potatoes. Um, but yeah, this this uh, cherry tomato, it's done. And you know, I didn't care too much for it because oh, I didn't even notice. I came out here earlier this morning and looked around. And I only paid attention to those things that I knew, like the tomatoes. I didn't know my beans were going to do this. Look at that. I didn't know the bean plants had a hard time with frost. I was going to be taking these out anyways because I need to let them dry out so I can finish collecting the beans out of them. I just didn't have any idea that the frost would do that to them. Um, I guess now I know for next time. <laughs> so I can make sure that I don't. Okay, so this is that other cherry tomato. This is the one I've been harvesting a lot off of. And as you can see, this one is all dead too. The leaves are just sagging, hanging. So, oh well. I didn't cover this one either because, like I said before, I really didn't want it. Didn't care for them. Um, next time, I'm going to try and grow, I'm going to still grow some cherry tomatoes. But next time, a lot of people that I've talked to said that the Sweet 100s was a good variety. And like I said, I wanted to try those Sun Gold, I think they're called. They're cherry tomatoes. They're yellow. Um, I heard those was pretty good. So I guess I'll get some of those so I can try those um, and grow those. Oh, my goodness. I did not cover this tomato plant. This was my um, Hungarian heart heirloom tomato. And it didn't produce anything because it struggled. Um, right here, there's, it's windy. So it just got uh, hit really hard by the wind. And, um, and then when I was gone a couple of times... Um, it, it just seems like every time I go some, take some time off and go somewhere for a few days, I come back and something has happened to my garden. Um, the last couple of times that I went away, I had water issues. And so this plant never produced any actual tomatoes for me. And it was much bigger and I cut it back. So this right here that you see is actually one of the suckers that grew out from it. This is a sucker. Another one on the other side here. This one was a sucker. And so anyways. And they have flowers on them. There are some flowers. But it's too late in the season for it to do anything. Because it's, right now all the cold weather is setting in. But I be dog, that's the only tomato. That one and this one, this one actually looks better than the one on the other side that I said survived too. And I covered that one. This one I did not cover at all. <laughs> because I figure I'm going to cut this one down anyways and plant some stuff in its container. Because, you know, tomato season is over and done with. I was just trying to stretch it out as much as I could. My leeks in here are doing just fine. I guess they like the cold. They can withstand the cold. They're doing that catnip. That dang catnip. It survived too. I was hoping that, you know, it would <laughs> die off or something because of the cold. Heck no, nah, it's still here. Still looking good, standing tall pretty color <laughs> isn't it something always the plants that you don't want 
those are the plants that do well the ones that volunteer themselves and the ones that you just you just don't want those are the ones that do good and then the ones that you really want those are the ones that struggle and you got to baby them and everything another piece of good news is my peppers didn't do too bad in fact from when I saw them earlier, the leaves are unrolling because they curled up like how this one is. They curled up and all of them was like that. And so they're opening it up because of the sun and the warmth, I'm guessing. I'm hoping to be able to keep these going just so that I can harvest all of these peppers off of them. I've got a lot of poblanos here and still a lot of these uh, three-sided, Syrian three-sided peppers that I want to be able to harvest and use. So I'm hopeful there's still flowers. They're still putting out flowers and stuff. So I'm hopeful that I can uh, have a a good harvest. If not, I'll take them off and salvage what I can, but it's just upsetting. <laughs> you know, and I used to love this time, this season. Fall season was always my favorite season because I couldn't stand the heat of summer. I was always happy for that heat to be finished. I like snuggling up and watching a good movie and having coffee or cocoa or something and until I started gardening. I still like the fall season um, and I still like the winter. It's just, you know, it just wreaks havoc on some of your crops. I have to, you know, switch gears, I guess. I was supposed to take these hibiscus seedlings in they didn't do too bad I didn't cover them either they didn't do too bad um, and the fig did really good during that frost I was amazed because I thought I would have to take the fig in the house but it did really good so I don't know I'm still learning. Still learning the harsh realities of the changes in the seasons and stuff and what works good and what doesn't. So anyways, I guess I'll go through today and take all the rest of these tomatoes out of these containers and plant something else in those in their spot. Now I planted beans, but now that I see what the cold did to the beans that's already growing over in my other bed I don't know if that was a good idea I thought beans could withstand the frost dang it well I guess we'll see what happens instead of planting more beans I'll just plant something else in these containers I don't know I have some I have some peas peas can withstand the cold a lot better so I don't know I'll see and when I know and I figure it out, then I'll tell you. <laughs> but that's it for this. Oh, the onions did good. Look at that. The onions did good. I got some new one. A new one right here growing that popped up. Well, I guess that's good then. That's good to know that my onions are going to do just fine. <laughs> So right now, I'm just gonna pull out this um, tomato plant so that I can uh, have access to my potato container right here because I noticed there was a lot of potatoes in there. I didn't harvest, so I planted my first batch of them in here and then I didn't harvest them fast enough because then they ended up um, sprouting the tomatoes, I mean tomatoes, the potatoes that were 
left in here they ended up sprouting and so this is that this is that cherry tomato plant um anyways they ended up sprouting and so i just didn't get them out fast enough and so now there's a lot of them here i was gonna try and get this on video i guess i'll show you some of it i won't be able to get it all on video because well frankly <laughs> i just want to get it done try and dig all this up real quick and see what i can find in here um and then i'll just show you the results of what i have out of here I think that'd be the easiest thing because right now just trying to make sure this camera is angled right and everything it's just it's just a little bit much to do so I'll do that and then I'll come back on and show you what I got it's just one of those days where you just gotta listen to some oldies and get your hands dirty so just wanted to show you real quick there's the potatoes. I found a lot of, um, a whole lot of worms in my dirt, which is always good. Uh, especially since I started out with no worms and they just migrated. I guess I put all the right stuff inside that, um, container over there that they just, um, decided to go crazy i wanted to show you guys this look at this tomato plant i uh, i think it has superpowers or something this tomato plant has been exposed meaning uncovered the last couple of days in 20 degree weather we've had we've been in the mid 20s mid to high 20s and it survived all my other tomato plants i showed you on the other video clip they're all dead <laughs> that tomato plant is doing even better than these pepper plants that i've covered both days trying to preserve them from the cold and yeah they're not completely lost um these pepper plants are, they struggling though. They're trying to survive it. The leaves is all curled up as you can see on uh, parts of them. But, uh, I'm going to keep covering them up and trying to hang on to them as best I can. At least until, like, this pepper right here has started to blush a little. It's supposed to be red when they're mature. And it started to blush a little, and this one over here is starting to lighten up and blush a little. So I'm just trying to let them at least get to their full potential so I can see how they uh, are going to look. And then these poblanos, I really want these to continue to grow and get to their full potential. So that um, I'll be able to make that soup that I want to make out of them. And I mean, these aren't tiny, but they're not necessarily big either. So anyways, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how they do. I'm hoping for the best, but I just wanted to show how that tomato plant compared. Oop. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut that out. <laughs> Tripping and falling. Compared to this, this tomato plant, compared to let's say <laughs> this tomato plant and how it looks and how dead it is and limp. I don't get it. Every last one of my other tomato plants all died except for that one. And I never even covered him. And some of these others, I've covered them. They were covered. So you would think that they would be the ones that would survive. Because they were covered. 
nope that one left uncovered and i left others uncovered too and they still died so the ones that were covered and the other ones that were uncovered still died that's the only plant and that's a hungarian heart plant that i got the seeds from uh baker creek that's the only one that survived so far so <laughs> it's crazy okay <laughs> So here's the final product, final result. I changed the water system in this bed. I took out the, the thick uh, tubing that I was using on this part. I still have the thick tubing um, falling around the bed. And, and in fact, I have it in a continuous cycle now. And then I reattached this one to go over here to this pool garden. Um, I want to start planting in this bed, but I'm trying to make sure that all the water is getting through well. I still have some issues with the water coming through this one, even though I put... I don't know if you can see that. I put holes in it, but the water still won't go through this one completely. It runs from the top there and the top over here, but in the middle, no water goes through. So I don't know what's going on with that. I'm gonna have to work that out. Look at who's decided to come out of his spot. <laughs> hey, tiger. It's my baby. And he is so cute. I'll probably take that part out because I got ashy legs. Anyways. But yeah, I took these out off of the top of this one here. It was just getting too much water. And I had holes. I had holes in this one that I put but the it's just too much water getting into this bed and as you can see like around the outskirts there's water in the dirt from where it was getting too much water so i don't know i'm trying to work out my water issue i noticed my bill has been high and so i got to get control over this water issues so that my bill can now you know go down i'm hoping that by me using this um putting the narrower tubing like how i did these beds that it's gonna help i think what i need to do because on this side as well oh my shadow is in the way let me flip around <laughs> okay so um, on this side as well I put holes on this but uh, there again on the end it waters on the ends it waters but right in the middle is not watering so I have to figure something out with that I wanted to also show you guys my onions are coming up my raw onions here are popping up so I'm really happy about that because as I said before I love my onions uh, and then also I have um, you can kind of see right here this one is popping out uh, my chard is coming up too and then also and this is, I think this is really cool. My purple um, cauliflower is coming up. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's purple. It, it's popping out purple. The leaves are purple. <laughs> I think that is just the coolest thing. Like, look at this one. So, 
I mean, that's just really cool. But I got a lot of things popping up. Um, some of that elephant garlic that I bought at the store is also coming up right here. I don't know if you can see that with that shadow in the way. And there's another one. Sprout it right there. So, I have stuff coming up. Over here I have, um, uh, once again, my shadow is in the way. Uh, over here I have uh, turnips that I planted. You can see them peeking through the pine needles. And then I also have, this right here is, um, uh, oh, I forget. I think that's just the regular broccoli. I mean, regular cauliflower. Because the other one is purple. The other line is all purple. I think this one is just the regular um, cauliflower. The snowball, I think it's called cauliflower um but yeah and then the, this bed over here i've got stuff popping up too um you can see right here i'm going down the way there stuff is popping up all down along there and then along here as well there's things popping up um some things i'm gonna have to re plant like this one some bug got to it and ate it so I'm gonna have to replant something in there um, and that's always a struggle now there's I guess since the word is out that I'm growing stuff the bugs are just excited and they come out from all over the place but I see you can see my peas are already starting to attach themselves these are sugar snaps already trying to attach themselves to the trellis here i have to add some more where once again bugs has started to eat them and left just little stubs um but all in all i'm happy with how this is turning out how this looks Sorry about my shadow getting all in the way. <laughs> but, um, like a tiger. This is my love bug. He comes out whenever, he loves when I'm out here in the garden. Because then he follows me around and, and everything and watches what I do. It's so cute. Anyways, um, I planted some new things in these um, containers. Like this one here, I have some red Russian kale. And I'm not completely sold on putting the straw. The next time I video, you might see pine needles. I like how the pine needles, everything that I planted in the pine needles um, is coming up fairly quickly. I'm thinking the straw might cause some issue um this one here i just planted some uh i know what it is i just can't think of it right now i just drew a blank <laughs> um spinach that's what i put there spinach <laughs> i still have a lot more stuff to do but those are the things that I'm happy or happy about right now. Um, and then I have cilantro planted over here. And I had two tomato plants survive the frost. I came over here and I pruned this one back. Got a lot of the dead stuff off of it. But he still has his little fruits on there and and everything and a new one here so oh and another one down here so i'm just gonna let him be he survived through the cold i'm happy for that okay so i finally got this bed finished i finally changed out the water system um and got 
all of the uh, leaf litter and uh, leaf uh, mulch that I had sitting off on top of here. So all three beds now are finished. I just have to plant in this one here um, still, but I just wanted to show you the finished product and it's all done. Um, there's some other things that I planted as well, but um, stay tuned for the garden tour. I'll be doing my fall tour soon, um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, thank you for watching, especially if you got to this part of, of the video. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long this video is going to be since I had to do it in uh, parts, but thank you so much for watching and for being interested in my little humble garden here and the things that I'm doing. I'm not an expert, but you know, I try to do, try many different methods and ways just to see what works out best and um, what's going to work for me in my area, the region that I'm in, and the climate that I live in, the elevation that I'm in. So always keep that in mind when you're watching other people do things. You, you have to kind of experiment um, to see, unless you know for sure, like they're your neighbors and you know for sure that they are in the same type of environment as you. Um, so that's basically all I'm doing, just trying out different things. But I really appreciate you watching, and um, I will try and have more stuff, uh, more content out soon. Um, I will be uh, uploading my fall garden tour, or fall winter garden tour. Um, so, as always, God bless.